Republicans fit into this extremist camp, and that's not the reality. Even some of the things that the host listed there, she talked about abortion, yet many Americans, even if they consider themselves pro-choice, allowing people to have abortion, they think there should be limits on abortion. Most Americans agree with that. A lot of Americans think that you should have the right to protect yourself, even if they think there should be limits to that. So what you see is the media elite are going to this extreme position. Americans aren't lining up, and that's part of the reason why you're even seen whether it's MSNBC or CNN or, or other media outlets, the ratings are, are tanking. People aren't turning to them for the truth. Meantime, a Washington Post columnist declaring that Biden has finally come into his own after the FBI's raid of Mar-a-Lago, stating it will act as a reset moment for his presidency. Quote, the last thing the White House wanted was an event that would relegate Biden's victories to second or third place in the news cycle. This is the month Biden finally came into his own. Biden may go down as achieving something like Ronald Reagan did, but in reverse. His time in office is altering the nation's assumptions about government and its role in our economic life. Again, continuing this theme, Beverly, does the mainstream media have any clue as to what the mainstream mm -hmm. American thinks? Because I was talking to people this weekend, had a couple days off down there with the real people and two things stood out one they were concerned about the fbi raid and two they were concerned about fbi or excuse me irs audits that's all anybody was talking about yeah, this columnist wants to point to Biden as return to normalcy, but the reality is, is the FBI raid has led left us with more questions and answers. Americans are concerned about that. It's also the one year since the botched Afghanistan withdrawal. People are concerned about that. And even though Biden is going to tout his legislative victories this 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 month, especially the fact that he's going to be signing the Inflation Reduction Act or the so-called Inflation Reduction Act today, the reality is it doesn't matter match up with the fact that people are still facing high inflation. And so this is a complete disconnect with what Americans are feeling. I think they're actually concerned about the direction of the country. That's why polling numbers show that people are concerned about the direction of this country. And so I just think it's completely out of touch. I think what this columnist is doing is trying to save face for President Biden because many Democrats don't even want him to come to uh, their election rallies. People don't want to say whether or not they would vote or support Joe Biden if he ran ran again, and I think that's concerning to those in his administration. Beverly Hallberg, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. All right, meteorologist Adam Klotz is here with our Fox Weather Forecast. And Adam, I would come to your rally if, if you were running for <laughs> office. I'd be there. I appreciate that because I because I have good news. I bring good news. Maybe. Maybe. Sure. Well, yeah. Do you yeah. have good news? I think so. If, right. you, if you think it's been a really hot summer, at least for the last month or so, boy, does it feel nice out there. So far, this week continues here the next couple of days uh, for most folks anyways. But early this morning, a lot of 60s, lower 60s, low humidity. So it feels really nice outside, uh, mostly dry across the country. There is one spot where we're tracking a big line of showers currently moving in the St. Louis area and much of Missouri currently covered by some of those heavy rains and thunderstorms. Your temperatures today, if you live in the East Coast or the Midwest, staying very mild, only around 80 degrees. Once again, though, in the Plain States, that's a place where it has not cooled down over the last month. 101 degrees in Dallas, so big area that we're going to get up to around 100 degrees, 105 degrees. And then out on the West Coast, a place where it's kind of been a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, unfortunately, here in the next couple of days, it gets incredibly hot once again. Uh, potentially some record-breaking highs from Northern California up in the Pacific Northwest. You see temperatures there ranging from 97 degrees all the way up to 110 degrees. So, uh, yeah, I started off by saying it was cool, but that's just because it's cool where we're standing. There are some folks out there that are going to be dealing with some heat. Redding, 109. Ouch. Yeah. Mixed bag. Nice. Mixed mm -hmm. bag today. Thank you, Good Adam. news and bad. Yep. Thank you, Adam. Remember this guy. Absolutely, the American public should trust what the FBI is doing. It's not that the FBI is targeting any one side or the other. What you see is the FBI going out on a day-in, day-out basis, objectively investigating allegations of law. So rich. Anti-Trump FBI agent Peter Strzok wants you to blindly trust the FBI. Former acting attorney general Matt Whitaker is here to weigh in. He joins us next. Elon Musk says Tesla's full self-driving software is amazing. It will blow your mind. But does it work? 
This happens over and over again. 100,000 Tesla drivers are already using full self-driving on public roads. I'm Dan Odette. I'm a safety engineer. And Tesla full self-driving is the worst commercial software I've ever seen. Tell Congress to shut it down. Paid for by the Dawn Project. To finally lose 80 pounds and keep it off with Golo is amazing. I've been maintaining. The weight is gone, and it's never coming back. With Golo, I've not only kept off the weight, but I'm happier, I'm healthier, and I have a new lease on life. Golo is the only thing that will let you lose weight and keep it off. Who loses 138 pounds in nine months? I did. Golo's a lifestyle change, and you make the change, and it stays off. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, part-time musician, but longtime customer of Relaxium Sleep. And I'm here with my good friend and country music legend, Larry Gatlin. Now, Larry, a few months ago, you asked me, Huck, does that Relaxium really work? I remember that night because I was tired of not sleeping. I took it to word, I tried it. Guess what? Relaxium Sleep works. Larry, so many Americans are struggling to get to sleep. Sleep for me for years has been kind of a concept I've heard people talk about. Uh, <laughs> Relaxium sleep has changed my life. I'm grateful to you and it has been a blessing to our family. I am now a paying customer. You know, I loved it when you called me and told me that it worked the very first night for you. And it has worked every night since then. Call today for your 30-day risk-free trial and 100% money-back guarantee. Relaxium Sleep doesn't need a prescription, is 100% drug-free, and is non-habit-forming. Relaxium Sleep worked from the very first night I took it. As a nurse, sleep is very important. Relaxium Sleep really helps me stay focused and also do my job efficiently. Developed by renowned neurologist and sleep expert, Dr. Eric Siliberti, Relaxium Sleep's triple action formula was designed to regulate your natural sleep cycle, relax your body, and calm the mind for better sleep through the night. It's also non-habit forming and made in the USA. Take it from Larry Gatlin and me. If you're having trouble sleeping, quit having trouble. Get some sleep with Relaxium Sleep. Call right now. Call now. Relaxium Sleep is giving away 1,000 bottles. Call and get your very own risk-free bottle of Relaxium Sleep now. Fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling refreshed with Relaxium Sleep. Call 800-613-5462, 800-613-5462. President Trump calling on the FBI to release the affidavit used to justify the unprecedented raid on his Mar-a-Lago home after the Justice Department went to court to keep it private. Brooke Seaman spoke with the former president yesterday. She has the very latest on the story. Brooke. Hey, good morning, Carly Todd. The Justice Department is refusing to release the affidavit that greenlit the FBI's unannounced search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Now, prosecutors are saying releasing the document would taint the government's ongoing criminal investigation. Filing a motion to keep the affidavit sealed, the DOJ says, quote, if disclosed, the affidavit would serve as a roadmap to the government's ongoing investigation, providing specific details about its direction and likely course in a manner that is highly likely to compromise future investigative steps. But the former president is calling the department's bluff with this statement on Truth Social overnight, saying, quote, in the interest of transparency, I call for the immediate release of the completely unredacted affidavit pertaining to this horrible and shocking break-in. Trump attorney Lindsey Halligan says the department is putting up red tape to cover up its political motivations. Listen. The inventory list they gave us is borderline worthless. It doesn't say where the documents were located, what specifically was taken. The Department of Justice is not communicating with us. The Department of Justice clearly has different rules for Donald Trump than anyone else out there.
In another twist, the former president claims FBI agents seized his passports during the raid. Not long after, CBS News' Nora O'Donnell tweeted this, quote, according to a DOJ official, the FBI is not in possession of former President Trump's passports. But Trump spokesman Taylor Budowich appeared to debunk that report by sharing a screenshot on Twitter of an email sent to Trump lawyers earlier in the day by DOJ national security official Jay Bratt. That Justice Department email saying, quote, we have learned that the filter agents seized three passports belonging to President Trump, two expired and one being his active diplomatic passport. We are returning them. Meanwhile, House Republicans like Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan chiming in. Jordan sharing this cryptic tweet, preserve your documents. He attached a letter to White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain to that tweet. The letter reads in part, the American people deserve transparency and accountability from our most senior law enforcement officials in the executive branch. We will settle for nothing but your complete cooperation with our inquiry. This is We Learn Attorney General Merrick Garland deliberated for weeks over whether to approve the affidavit that justified the raid. Carly, Todd. All right, Brooke, thank you so very much. With that, let us bring in former acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker. Matt, you have been in charge of the DOJ. You have presumably filed affidavits in cases. Should the DOJ release the affidavit? Good morning. And typically in a case, uh, a, a typical case, you wouldn't release the affidavit until charges are filed or ultimately your investigation is complete. In this case, I think it's different. And, and obviously, Mayor Garland took weeks to decide to execute this search warrant. And I think, you know, one of his considerations had to have been how it was going to play in, uh, you know, with the American people. And in this case, this affidavit needs to be released. I mean, this investigation obviously has run its course. They've obtained the documents. There are no further steps that I can imagine they're going to take based on the crimes that they allege to be investigating. So <clears throat> based on everything I know about this case, it is time to release this affidavit in a abundance of a desire for transparency and making sure that the American people understand what the government is doing in their name. The FBI says there has been an increase in violent threats against agents, and former President Trump spoke to Fox News Digital, said it's time to ease tensions after this Mar-a-Lago raid. He said, I will do whatever I can to help the country. People are so angry at what is taking place. The temperature has to be brought down in this country if it isn't terrible things are going to happen. Uh, later in the interview, though, he also said that FBI agents could have planted evidence in his house. So is this mixed messages coming from the former president? How do you feel about those statements? Well, Carly, I feel really that the president is absolutely right, that the temperature needs to be lowered. Obviously, threats against law enforcement of any kind are not acceptable. Political violence is never acceptable. And so saying that, you know, we need a country where the rule of law is applied evenly and consistently to everyone, no matter whether you're an ordinary citizen or whether you're Donald J. Trump, the former president of the United States. Mm. And so in this particular case, obviously, the Department of Justice and the FBI needs to take steps uh, themselves to lower the temperature. And that, a lot of that is transparency, answering these questions, talking about investigations like this, why, for the first time in our America's history, a search warrant was executed on a former president of the United States. And mm -hmm. once I think that happens, uh, then I think we will have the temperature lowered. But until then, you know, the ball's really in the DOJ's court. Meantime, former FBI agent Peter Strzok, remember him? Uh, fired for his anti-Trump bias, is defending the agency. Take a listen. Absolutely, the American public should trust what the FBI is doing. It's not that the FBI is targeting any one side or the other. What you see is the FBI going out on a day-in, day-out basis, objectively investigating allegations of law. In case you've forgotten, let's pop up uh, this text exchange between Strzok and his lover, a fellow FBI agent named Lisa Page. This is from 2016. Page saying, quote, Trump's not ever going to become president, right? To which Strzok replied, quote, no, he won't. We'll stop it. So breathe easy, America. Peter Strzok has weighed in, told you nothing to see here. Your take, Matt. Well, I think this is a red herring. I mean, when he pops up and tries to assure us that there's no political influence at the FBI, I think we should be a little worried because, you know, he is the guy that uh, led an investigation uh, into the president of the United States uh, when there was no predication and there was no evidence that Donald Trump and his campaign had any relationship with Russia, Russian government. And in this case, 
that we have this search warrant executed on, you know, Peter Strzok is really giving away the goods, which is there are some at the FBI that believe that Donald Trump is a criminal. And so they're going to pursue this case as much as they possibly can. And that it's that bias and that uh, desire to get Trump no matter what that has really colored, I think, a lot of the last six years at the FBI. And until they're willing to do their work above board without any political influence whatsoever, uh, you know, we're going to have troubles like we have right now in this case. Yeah, you just have to wonder how we got here with the FBI, an agency that should be absolutely non-biased. Now a lot of people see it as the, you know, defense arm, the acting arm of the Democratic Party. Uh, Matt Whitaker, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you both. All right, healthcare workers who were fired for not getting the COVID vaccine just won a lot of money in court. We're talking to the attorney who led that case. Plus, it is a flight mayor at New York City airports. As staffing shortages keep hundreds of flights on the ground, they don't do much uh, good on the ground. Shal Kasani here with more on the airport chaos when we come back. Pain hits fast, so get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser-drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. And now, get relief without a pill with Tylenol Dissolve Packs. Relief without the water. Only two things are forever. Love and Liberty Mutual customizing your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And if anyone objects to this marriage... Kevin, no, not today. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Camping World is America's pre-owned RV superstore. We have over 10,000 quality pre-owned RVs to choose from, starting at just $99.95. Experience the Camping World difference. All pre-owned RVs come with a new mattress, tanks flushed and sanitized, and everything deep cleaned and odor neutralized. Looking to sell your RV? We buy more RVs than anyone else, and we guarantee we'll give you the best offer or give you $1,000. Shop America's pre-owned RV superstore at your local Camping World or online at CampingWorld.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and due to your incredible support, the original My Slippers are almost completely sold out. As a special thank you, I am launching my brand new all season slippers, slides, and sandals for as low as $29.98. This is a limited time offer, so go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code, and you'll get all my new footwear for as low as $29.98. My all-season slippers are made with my exclusive four-layer design that you won't find in any other slipper. They're finished with a breathable fabric so you can wear them all year round. And my new slides and sandals are made with patented impact gel, making them ultra comfortable and extremely durable. I guarantee they'll be the most comfortable footwear you'll ever own. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen now to get your very own all-season slipper slides and sandals for as low as $29.98 with your promo code. This is an introductory offer and it won't last long, so order now. Tonight, Jeffrey Epstein, what we know from the biggest question surrounding his case to who's really connected to the disgraced financier. Tucker has answers tonight. Guys, it's that time, and nothing's happening. Well, now there's score from Force Factor to rev your libido and maximize physical response. It's no wonder Force Factor is the number one fastest growing men's health brand in America. Rush to Walmart today and pick up score. If you're like I was, you're tired of worn out plastic mats under your office chair. They dent and crack and they're uncomfortable to roll on. I found a premium alternative, a glass chair mat by Vitraza. I liked it so much, I bought the company. I'm George Pardo, president of Vitraza. Our glass chair mats are made of super strong glass and protected with a nanotech coating. So you'll always get a smooth, easy glide. And they're beautiful. Tired of replacing plastic? I promise this is the last chair mat you'll need. And we give you a lifetime warranty. Comfort, style, durability. A Vitraza glass chair mat will completely transform your workspace. Home office or office office. We stock 18 popular sizes, and we ship free to anywhere in the lower 48. Get the look you deserve. I invite you to shop online at vitraza.com. Use promo code TV and save 10% on any glass chair mat at vitraza.com. For muscle cramps and spasms, TheraWorks Relief works fast. So get back at it. 
TheraWorks works. For fast muscle relief, TheraWorks works. Available in stores everywhere. Surprised the band was able to make it. FAA canceling or delaying hundreds of flights at three of our nation's busiest airports yesterday. Oh boy. Cheryl Grisotti for our sister network Fox Business here with a detailed Cheryl. Oh, good morning, guys. Well, yep, the flight mirror continues. All three New York City area airports cutting flights, but it was the FAA that made the decision. The agency blaming staffing shortages Monday night, announcing there would be extensive delays. A ground stop was issued, meaning that flights destined for the Big Apple were not allowed to leave their respective cities. All in all, 880 delays, 24 cancellations hitting New York City. But the skies may not be clear anytime soon. The FAA has plans to hire 1,500 new air traffic controllers, but that won't start until October 1st with the new fiscal year. So stand by to stand by at the airport. Just in time for the busy summer travel season, oh. October 1. Well done. Way to plan. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, crazy settlement here on a COVID mandate situation that we've been following for a while now. Yeah, the lawyer in you coming out on this one, Todd, for sure. Uh, a first of its kind settlement for hospital workers that sued their employer over vaccine mandates. A group of nearly 500 healthcare workers at North Shore University Health System receiving a $10 million settlement. The employees will receive $25,000 if they were terminated or resigned over the mandates. $3,000 if they were forced to get the jab to keep their job 20,000 to the 13 lead plaintiffs uh, in court. The group argued that North Shore illegally refused to grant religious exemptions uh, to the mandate. Two million, by the way, just for you, Todd, two million went to attorney's sure. fees. Of course. Well, I mean, look, that's <laughs> bound to happen in these kind of situations. Let's get the those... attorney's fees. They get their lead plaintiffs and they go do these <laughs> class action type suits. But what's really stood out yeah. to me about this case is the fact that for years, religion was one of those things that you put on a pedestal and you could not discriminate based upon. But then COVID comes along and it's just like, oh, yeah. COVID allows us to basically throw religion out the window. Well, no, it doesn't. And this verdict, this settlement, I should say, bears mm -hmm. that out. Yeah. yeah. The, the other thing is that um, the CDC just changed its guidance and now they're saying that they aren't going to distinguish any difference between vaccinated and non-vaccinated people. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, too little, too late on that one. A lot of people lost their jobs over not getting vaccinated. Boy, what a difference two years sure. makes. Yeah, yeah. I knew I knew the attorney knew was going to was going to jump out at this one, Todd, but it is a fascinating case. But what's going to be interesting, obviously, and I know we need to run. Are there going to be similar lawsuits filed across That's the country? Exactly I think right. there will be. I mean, I think you're 100 percent right, yeah. because I think they're going to look at this case and say, Hey, they got 10 million for this one hospital system. What if we extrapolate that out? And, and to your point, yes, that's lawyers lawyering, but I think it goes to the bigger picture, Cheryl. I mean, you've been covering these stories for over two years now. You don't get to eliminate religion just because you're scared of a virus. And also, did these hospitals not extrapolate out their need for workers? I, I get that's another question that I have. They were so willing to eliminate all these workers and then, oh, we don't have enough workers to handle, you know, sick people people. It, that boggles my mind that they never saw yeah. that as a possible consequence of their actions. But from a legal perspective, the religion thing is the big, and the big issue. If I could just add, I think a lot changed in the minds of many when we realized that vaccines don't prevent people from getting the disease. It, it's personal protection. It, you'll, you could still get sick. You'll just get a less severe case. Then why were all these people losing their jobs uh, for failing to personally protect themselves? That is their own choice. And then uh, the private sector is one thing. Then you talk about the military. And a lot of people, you talk about the uh, rates of uh, recruitment are down. Many people say it's because you have to, you're required to get the vaccine. We're talking about some of the healthiest Americans in the country. Um, who are wanting to go to the military. So it's really just a, it's an interesting situation that's unfolding and Cheryl, right now. I want yep. to bring you back in here. Yep. You understand how businesses work. What message does this send to businesses going forward, this settlement? Well, that basically overreaching into the personal uh, lives of your employees can actually cost you. And that's what companies care about, the bottom line at the end of the day. Because look, it's going to be, like I said, there's going to be, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot more of these lawsuits to follow. There probably already is, uh, but I'll bring that to you yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. If a hospital um, can successfully get sued in this front, at, you yeah. know, healthcare facility, I, I think you're right. I think there's going to be more to come. Be more, yeah. Cheryl, thank you very, of very course, much. You bet. Uh, crazy story here. From the border 
to Broadway. As Texas sends its migrants by bus to the Big Apple, Mayor Eric Adams getting ready to put all those illegal immigrants in a luxury Times Square hotel. You may remember it as the Milford Plaza. City taxpayers foot in the bill. Tommy Laren next on that. <laughs> but first, let's check in with Will Kane to see what's coming up on Fox and Friends. Will, good morning. Good morning, guys. Well, we have a big show today. Congressman Brian Mast is here. He'll talk about the demand for accountability one year after the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Plus, President Biden has taken a break from his ritzy South Carolina vacation on Kiowa Island to sign the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Mike Rowe and Stuart Varney break down why that name is misleading and how much it could actually cost you. And another attempt to get the recall of George Gascon on the ballot just failed in Los Angeles. Leo Terrell is here to react. Plus, we've got the best back to school tech that won't break your bank from smart pens to smartphones, how to save on everything your student needs. All coming up in just 14 minutes on Fox and Friends. Five eight eight two three hundred empire today. Empire. Five eight eight. With Choice Hotels, there's always a reason to book it. Hey, bud. How about we go on a little trip? Can I come? Whatever your reason, save up to 20% when you book over 7,100 locations at choicehotels.com. Right now, someone could be listed as the owner of your home and stealing thousands of dollars of your hard-earned equity. Anybody who owns property should worry about home title theft. There's no other crime that is so easy, so quick, and so lucrative. Your home, your equity, and your peace of mind can all be stolen in one fell swoop by home title thieves like Matthew Cox. Nobody thinks that I can take their house. Nobody thinks that. Believe it or not, a single page document is all it takes to transfer proof of ownership out of your name. People think, well, there's a whole huge process, but the truth is, it, it's a one page document. But it still must get through one final barrier, the county clerk. When someone comes in with fraudulent deed, if it's notarized and all the spaces are filled in, we by statute have to accept it. We cannot give it back to them and say, we know this is fraudulent, we're not gonna file it. That's against the law. It's a false sense of security, it's, it's not real. Bottom line is yes, it happens, and we can't stop it from happening, and it only takes once for it to sting you, and it's a very sad thing to watch. You've put your, your love into the house, and all of a sudden, it might not be yours. It's a devastating crime. For pennies a day, Home Title Lock will monitor your title nonstop, alerting you to suspicious activity. If you can get a warning notice that this first step has happened, you can stop the rest. Meet Terry. He signed up for Home Title Lock and was immediately alerted to suspicious activity. So I received the report and saw, hey, I have a lien against my property that I didn't know about. We got it fixed right away. And when you sign up, you'll receive a complimentary home title scan, a $100 value for free to see if you're already a victim. What would it do to your life if you lost your property? I mean, there's, there's no price you can put on that. Go online or call now, 1-800-938-4415. Before treating your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, you're not the only one with questions about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start, with about 10 minutes of treatment once every three months. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you and if a sample is available. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. Plus, right now, you may pay $0 for Botox. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox. I just 
America's weather team. Precise, personal, powerful. Fox Weather is Hurricane HQ. More than 200,000 illegal immigrants flooding through the U.S. southern border in July alone. In the past 24 hours, there have been at least 2,200 illegal crossings in just one sector of the southern border. Retired acting ICE director Tom Holman joined us earlier with his take. Since Joe Biden became president, 1,217 aliens have died on U.S. soil. So if you want to talk about horrific conditions, go to the southwest border and see what Texas and Arizona are dealing with. And more migrants arriving in Manhattan yesterday morning as Texas vows to bring the border crisis to sanctuary city Democrats. And now New York City Mayor Eric Adams is reportedly getting ready to house migrants in an upscale Times Square hotel on taxpayers' dime. Jackie Abanez joins us live in studio with more. Jackie. Hi, good morning, guys. Well, New York City officials continue to spar with Texas as 52 more immigrants arrive here in the Big Apple. Mayor Eric Adams first accusing the Lone Star State of mistreating migrants. Listen. Texas governor being disingenuous about, you know, what was the destination, what was happening. Um, any adult or child, those are horrific con conditions that place human beings under. We are going to provide these families with the dignity that the Texas governor failed to do. Texas Division of Emergency Management is denying the mayor's claims, saying, quote, the state of Texas loads the necessary amounts of food, water, PPE on buses before they travel to NYC and D.C. Also sharing this video that the conditions Mayor Adams speaks of are hardly horrific, although Mayor Adams seems to have something more luxurious in mind. He announced the city's plans to convert a swanky Times Square hotel into an intake shelter for as many as 600 migrants. Meantime, Republican leaders are calling out the hypocrisy from Democrats who were silent when immigrants were being flown into NYC on secret midnight flights. We have seen flights coming into Westchester Airport and other airports, and Governor Hochul has been completely silent on it. It's only recently that a new method of transportation has come to our area. Stop the hypocrisy. Stop the incentives. The lieutenant governor of Texas now warning other pro-sanctuary cities to be ready to accept immigrants with open arms. Well, first of all, every mayor of a big blue city, which are most of the top 25 in the country, should be on notice. Look out your window. You might see a bus coming to you one day in the future. Governor Greg Abbott is promising sanctuary cities they will not feel relief until the Biden administration takes the crisis at the southern border seriously. Todd Carley, back to you guys. Right, Jackie, thank you very much. With that, let us bring in Tommy Laren, host of Tommy Laren is Fearless on Out. Kick, Tommy. Let's focus at this hotel. For those who are at my age, grew up in the it. New York metropolitan area. This was known as the Milford Plaza. There was a commercial with a jingle. We all know of this place. But for guests staying at the hotel around the time it will reportedly begin housing migrants, one night in a standard room is going to cost you 350 bucks. A room with the city view, an extra 20 bucks on top of that. And one night in an executive suite is going to run you over $650. So if I'm a single mom who remembers hearing about this hotel and these commercials, working two jobs, living in a tiny apartment in the Bronx, how should I feel about the fact that these illegals who just came to the city within a couple hours are going to get housed in this place for free? Well, every American taxpayer should be outraged by this. And if we're wondering why we have an invasion, an inundation at our southern border, it perhaps could be the fact that we're rolling out the red carpet for illegal immigrants who have no legal right to be here in the first place. This is the opposite of Remain in Mexico. The whole point of Remain in Mexico was to separate those that are truly seeking asylum from those that just want to take advantage of the American taxpayer. But also, not just the people that cannot afford to stay in, in a swanky Times Square hotel. Let's talk about the homeless veterans that we have on our streets, on our bridges, along our freeways, highways, interstates in the United States who don't get this kind of treatment. Now, although I applaud what Governor Abbott is doing by busing these illegal immigrants into these sanctuary cities and states, it's going to take an inundation in these cities and these states for them to change their policies. And it's not going to be the politicians that change them. It's certainly not going to be Democrat politicians. It's going to have to be the voters that realize what an epic problem this is. We simply cannot absorb hundreds 
hundreds of thousands, millions of people into a country that is already struggling. It can't happen any longer. Tommy, what do you think about Texas Lieutenant Governor uh, Dan Patrick's Patrick's comments saying, if you're a sanctuary city, you better watch out. There may be a migrant bus coming in your direction. And obviously the goal is to, you know, flood these liberal areas with illegal immigrants the same way that it's getting hit really hard in Texas. And then maybe those Democratic governors could talk to President Biden about changing his policies. Do you think that's something that could work? Uh, I was hopeful, but now we're seeing Democrat politicians again rolling out the red carpet at the expense of the American taxpayer, at the expense of those that are in these cities. So, as I just said, I don't think it's going to be Democrat politicians that are going to change at all until they hear from their voters. And those in blue cities are always fine being liberal and tolerant and loving and welcoming everybody until it is in their backyard. But I'll also note, if this is a Times Square hotel, this is where the tourists are. So, again, I think that they need to be bused into areas where these politicians are living. And maybe then, maybe then they will change their tune, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Meantime, Tommy, let's turn to this. A Minneapolis teachers union has implemented a new clause in its latest contract, which requires white teachers to be fired before minority teachers, regardless of seniority. Putting aside the fact, Tommy, that this is literally day one of constitutional law illegal, like you can't do this at all. How dangerous is a policy like this? Well, it certainly is. And what kind of message is this teachers union sending? What kind of message are any of these woke liberals sending with language like this and discrimination like this? We should be coming together as a country right now because Americans are struggling. We shouldn't be differentiating between white and black and having the oppression Olympics be the topic of discussion. It should be how are we going to come together and make sure that everybody has a job, make sure everybody is treated equally. Special treatment and equal treatment are not the same thing, and you can't have it both ways. So I'm glad that we're calling things like this out. It is illegal. It is ridiculous. And it does nothing, by the way, to teach the younger generation, those students, what it truly means to be an American. It's about equality. It's not about woke liberalism like this. Yeah, well, the union's agreement with the city of Minneapolis reads, that, reads quote, if accessing a teacher who was a member of a population underrepresented among licensed teachers in the site, the district shall excess, I guess, fire the next least senior teacher who was not a member of an underrepresented population. Uh, so that's the agreement right there saying that if you are a white teacher, you're going to get fired before a minority teacher, even if the minority teacher is performing less successfully than you. And that really comes to the core of it. It shouldn't, regardless of race, the best teachers be the ones educating our children. Oh, absolutely. And again, I'd like to point out, because I love pointing out liberal hypocrisy here, this is from the same group of people that tell us that we can't differentiate between men and women, but they have no problem differentiating what they feel is somebody that is white and somebody who is not white or someone who is of color. How do they know what someone's heritage is, what their ethnicity is? And in a time when you can identify as whatever you want, they better be careful what they wish for, because they're in for a whole mess of semantics and people getting very upset about a ridiculous and moronic decision like this. When you hear stuff like this. Does it make you think the Democrats haven't figured out that, yeah, the economy is going to be huge going into November, but, you know, let's not forget what happened last year in Virginia. Education, mm -hmm. schools, students, still going to be big going forward, right, Tommy? Oh, it absolutely is. Identity politics out the window when you have inflation and gas prices the way they are now. You know, you might have some woke liberals that, that gets them to the polls because they want to be loving and tolerant and they believe that this is some form of justice or this is some form of reparation. But by and large, the American people are voting with their pocketbook and they see who's destroying their pocketbook and they see why they have a supply chain crisis and still can't find baby formula for the love of God. And they know that it's the Democrats to blame. It is Joe Biden. It is all Democrats. It is time to drain the swamp and get America working again and make America affordable again. Get away from the pronouns, the wokeism, we the virtue signaling. We and let's go. actually put people back to work and Fo doing well. Fox and Friends now.